I do not want random people with no education background or experience determining what books my child can read. Just because you can get up at every meeting and rant and rave does not give you authority over my child's education. The speaker speaking about what great Christians they are, great. Go tell your pastor. Our schools are not your church. I mean, if that's not a t-shirt slogan, then I don't know what is. There's a reason this video of Adrian Martin, a parent and Democratic chair of the predominantly red Texas county, aptly titled Hood County, too easy, is going viral again. See, after being forced to sit through the rants and ravings of God-fearing parents citing religion as their justification for book banning because where have I heard that before? She used her time to get some things off of her chest and it's worth listening to every single second. I do not want random people with no education background or experience determining what books my child can read, what curriculum they learn, and what clubs they can join. Just because you can get up at every meeting and rant and rave does not give you authority over my child's education. Your personal religious beliefs, people in this room and on this board, should not be affecting my child's education either. Our schools are not to be used for personal political agendas, and our children are here for education not religious indoctrination. I implore the board to put an end to trying to appease these extremists, focus on retaining staff, providing excellent public education, and a safe and welcoming learning space for all students. The speaker speaking about what great Christians they are, great. Go tell your pastor, our schools are not your church. Thank you. But if you're like me, you're wondering, well, who are these parents she's referring to? I did a little research, and here's a snippet of one of those parents who filed criminal charges against school librarians in Granbury, Texas, speaking at a school board meeting last year where she calls on the district to repent, and then proposes appointing a local pastor to vet all school library books moving forward, because of course. So you have people who are supposed to be gatekeepers for children and for student libraries who are handing it to them and purchasing it with our dollars. So repentance is the word that's on my heart. Um, Pastor Mary Cardin could not be here tonight. What she wanted was to plead for communication from you to us so we understand what you're doing and what you're thinking. And also, I know the new policy may have more librarians and independent school district employees on those committees and I feel like that's already headed in the wrong direction to have too many of them. I think you ought to have people of good moral st standards, people in the community that maybe even are voted on. Uh, pastors like Paul Duncan, he would never steer you wrong and he'll put you in a safety zone with your books. You don't have to have these ultra controversial books in your library and literally you have thousands of books so what harm is it to let go of some of them? And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Brown. And while this example pertains to Texas, you'll find the same sentiment echoed in school board meetings across many schools in Florida. I've been sitting here tonight and I'm appalled by how many gay people are here. Okay. Yeah. This is not what happened when I went to school. Teachers didn't teach gayism, Quiet down. lesbianism, and whatever ism it is this week. Well, teachers are resigning at staggering rates as a result. I'm here to speak on agenda item 231437, approval of personnel recommendations. I was recognized by this county as the district teacher of the year this year an honor that I am incredibly grateful for. I attended school here in this county since the fourth grade, and I served on that board as a senior in high school. I have never seen such fear from my colleagues as I have seen in the last two months. There are 33 instructional resignations for approval tonight, double the amount at this time last year. And I know for a fact that number will only increase as the summer progresses. These numbers stem not from site-based site -based leaders, not from classroom management issues. These numbers stem from teachers leaving the county, the state, or the profession altogether because of the culture that has been created in this district by certain members of the school board and members of this community. 
We couldn't recognize student achievements here tonight because of the political climate we're currently in. We have over 100 vacancies right now and more to come. I'd be lying if I didn't say that it was a nightly conversation with my husband about leaving my position. But I stay and I'll continue to stay. I have a son and I will have another soon and they both are my reason to be here tonight. I want my boys to have the same educational care that I had in this county and that cannot happen if we drive out all of our wonderful teachers. I have former students that are now teachers in our county that happen to be here tonight. I have current students that want to come back here to teach. I had a school board member walking into campuses to report teachers to the DOE without so much as a conversation is not a great recruiting ta tactic. Thankfully, not everyone is willing to sit back and listen to the forced sermons. The books that were to be shared have been accessible at Alpine Crest Elementary for nearly a decade and are logged and online. These books are well known for tackling blended families, adopted families, foster families, or any family that doesn't fit perfectly into a box. All students, families, and educators deserve to be respected and feel valued. I'm extremely disappointed in the way an inclusive Mother's Day lesson was canceled and my kid's librarian has been vilified. I knew there would be pushback from a few loud bullies, but I'm enraged that the administration sided with them. A majority of families have been denied an important lesson in our increasingly diversified world, and a platform was given to a group of fear-mongering extremists. This group claims that a story about a bear is pushing trans ideology, and a story about a girl feeling left out during Mother's Day is pushing a homosexual agenda. They say this is sexualization of children when they're the only ones that brought sex into it. The only agenda I'm seeing play out is that of Moms for Liberty, a well-funded and connected political group that preys on vulnerable people with manufactured outrage in the guise of protecting children. I'm here right now to protect my children from them. I'd have to strongly disagree that this group cares about the safety of all kids. The motivation behind the cancellation of a compassionate literacy lesson sends a message to minorities and LGBTQ families that their existence is unacceptable. By shielding your kids from love that looks different than yours, you're turning them into bullies and crippling them from living successfully in a diverse world. I've never seen them them shoveling mulch, putting up swing sets, painting door frames. We're here in the trenches. We're here with these children. This is 2023. I'm a Christian man married to a woman, but I think everyone should be represented fairly. If you want to keep your kids in a closet and just shelter them from everything, homeschool them. Send them to Christian school. This is a public school for everyone. Everyone. I've dealt with that woman. She loves these kids. Instead of backing Mrs. Mickey up, you let the bullies win. When you let the bullies win, they're going to keep bullying. I understand that these adult bullies have intimidated and incited an ungodly amount of hate in our community, but you, HCS leadership and admin, must show them that you have a zero tolerance policy for bullying. When you have a board policy that states you expect all students to treat each other with civility and respect, and then you let grown adults bully one of your educators, and you let them interrupt the education of our students, you're teaching the community that you don't actually mean what you I'm extremely concerned for our future if these are the issues that the Florida State government focuses on, and you should be too. You ever wonder why you don't hear many teachers speaking out on this issue? It's because they're scared. Teacher vacancy has more than doubled since January of 2019, going from 2,200 to numbers as high as 5,300. Could it be because students are getting worse? Maybe. Could it be due to the backlash of COVID? Maybe. Or could it be because they're scared to, they're scared to say anything that will get them fired? Nonetheless, scared to show a Disney movie in class or read a book with a gay character in it. Most likely. How are we supposed to get an unbiased education when the teachers are walking on eggshells? To end my point, I'd like to leave you with this. Every person on the school board in the Florida State government most likely has children or grandchildren, and those kids are going to build our future alongside me. While they may build it, teachers are the ones who mold them to be an active member of society, and I am so scared for the future if our teachers, our mentors, are being silenced. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.